in a field near Hailsham for four days and three nights only. Welcome to the Strange Games Festival. You are listening to SGFR, podcast radio for the festival. Now broadcasting, highlights and top picks, your tasty, tantalizing teas for this coming year. A bloke walks into a bar with a, what you- uh, a <laughs> small amphibian lizard on his shoulder. Yeah, bloke walks, that's how it goes. Bloke walks into a bar with a small amphibian lizard on his shoulder. And the barman says, excuse me, sir, what is that on your shoulder? And the bloke says, that's my pet. I call him Tiny. And the barman says, why is that? And to which he replies, because he's minute. Uh, very, very clever. I like Not that really. a lot. It's really quite sad. I, I like that a lot. It reminds me of my uh, my fa- uh, the the the, 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 the ET joke. What's ET, ET. short for? What? Little legs. <laughs> that's, that's very good. Actually, I quite like the. Uh, He's got little I'll, legs. I'll use that one later. My fa- my favorite joke I've I've heard recently. Why, why does Elton John not eat lettuce? I don't know why does Elton John not eat lettuce. Because he's a rocket man. That's very good. Hmm. <laughs> That's how I like my reactions to jokes. It's not with laughter. It's just people going, that is a very good joke, and I appreciate what you were doing there. That's really rather funny. That's a a good one. Do you know Mark? Do you know Mark? He came out with a comment the other day. He said, um, what type of music wind farms like? Go on. They're all big metal fans. Oh, that's very good. What's the... Oh, yeah, who's who's the coolest guy in the hospital? The ultrasound guy. Yeah, that's very good. Yes, and yes. when he when he's off when he's got a day off, who, who's the coolest guy in the hospital? The hip replacement guy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that reminds me of a Douglas Adams comment. Almost certainly. Is this the kind of interview you were hoping for? Not really. We haven't even started. I, haven't. I thought this is what you wanted. It's not the sort of thing you're after. I'm not after anything. I come in with no preconceptions, and that way, I'm just totally disappointed all the time. What? You, you sound like many of my exes. It's, it's it's really dodgy to have many exes. You know, maybe. maybe... So, no, hey, I'm just incapable of uh, of love. That's I'm all it is. Just a guy who can't say no. Anyway, so what did Douglas say? Yeah, he said, uh, "You're so unhip. It's a wonder your legs don't fall off." Very good, ladies and but... gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the one and the only James Benison with me. He has joined me in the interview suite. And you might ask yourself why, and we often do. But the answer really is because his name came up in a conversation about role-playing opportunities at this year's festival. Now, Mm. James Benison, for whom... Hello. Hello. What are you bringing to the festival this year? Why and why should people play it or them? Oh, oh wow. Um, that's three big, big questions. Well, should we start with a small question? Let's just start, let's start with what, what? Should we start with the what part of that? Oh, okay, yeah. I was just going to go how, but uh, what? How a car is how I'm getting there. Um, so I am... Um, uh, as An anarchist? I am an anarchist, um, and I uh, thought that king better watch out. Um I am the king of the nerds in Brighton, um, and I uh, enjoy role-playing immensely. Um, I am one of the official um, Adventurers League DMs uh, this year, um, so for any beginner um, D&D players, I shall be luring you into a world of someone else's creation. But aside of that, I like to promote other non-D&D games because there's so many other amazing games out there. I did a little poll to see, because I, I don't... Last year, I did like a million role-playing games, didn't have any time to do anything else. Mm. So I'm doing one like official role-playing thing that I'll be putting up on um, on the website, which is called One Honk Before Midnight. Now, I can see you're confused. No, no, no I'm grinning ear to ear. 
Okay. My good. head is I, full I, of geese. It is indeed. Geese is, is the name of the game in, in this in this particular game. Um, the idea is like a one-shot game, a very short one-shot, where you play a, a group of geese. It's a, it's a lovely day in the village, and you are all horrible, horrible geese yeah. um, who basically bully everyone in um, the village of Stafford-upon-Gander uh, <laughs> to, to try and bring about the uh, the end of the world, the, the honk apocalypse, by summoning the Great Feathered One. <laughs> It sounds weird, but it's generally just a, a, an opportunity for you to pretend to be geese and be horrible to, to humans, which, let's face it, is the dream of many of us. Mm. I played it with a few friends as a, as a little test run, and we didn't stop laughing for pretty much all of it. The game I, I ran, as a distraction, they decided to burn down an orphanage, <laughs> which was perhaps a little extreme, but it was very good fun. I'm, I'm a little confused there, because geese are not renowned for their opposable thumbs so how did they strike the match well these particular geese you are given gifts from the feathered the great feathered one which you can use as like little one-shot powers some like you can disguise yourself as a duck yeah <laughs> or, or one of the powers is i've got a knife <laughs> you, you you you've got a knife that you can use uh, there's lots of other silly ones as well also don't ask too many questions i think is the, probably the, the the, the good thing to remember about a, a goose-based role-playing game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a question for the lead, the, the heroic lead of the Adventurers League, Matt Town, mm. about, because uh, I understand it, that people will be taking their existing characters forward from game to game, from scenario to scenario. Indeed, that is how, how Adventurers League works. I have very, very strong yeah. views about uh, D&D. Um, which I'm not. I'm not going really? to spur to, uh, here right now because I, I, I imagine they're quite unpopular views. But my general kind of vibe is that if you're playing a game and you guys are all enjoying yourself and having fun, then don't let someone like yeah. me ruin your fun. For the sake of contention, what are your contentious views about D and D? And should people hunt you down with some sort of vendetta at the festival? Uh, I'm, as you know, I'm always happy to deal with people's vendettas against me at the festival. It, it's one of the main reasons that I do go. Um, just, just to yeah. present a good target for people. But my views on D&D, &D, let me preface this by saying that I have played Dungeons and Dragons since I was 10 years old. That's, that's 25 years yeah. playing and running um, various D&D &D games over a variety yeah. of different um, editions. And it's the, the, the first yes. game, first role-playing game that I got into. I've played many, many other ones since. D&D &D will always have a special place in my heart. And I say that mostly so that people don't get too angry at me. What I will say, though, is that yeah. having played other systems and I don't think that D&D is a role-playing game. I think D&D is a war game that has a role-playing element very loosely sellotaped on top of it, and not even necessarily a very good role-playing element. I think people use D&D as a role-playing thing, and, and that's great, and that, I, I, I suspect a large portion of people enjoy the role-playing bit more than the combat bit, but I also know, having played with a lot of people, that they really enjoy the, the combat element of it and the tactical thing. My view yeah. is that if you're going to try and play a role-playing game, there are a lot of, yeah. of other better options out there. If you're playing D&D &D and you're do, having a lovely time role-playing with your friends and pretending to be characters and things, and suddenly five wolves show up and then the next three hours of your lives are dedicated to a very overlong battle that you don't care about because it's yes. just five wolves, but because of the rules of D&D... You've got to sit around and go through the very specific rule set. And I don't think there's anything worse than being like, I'm really hyped up for this story. Oh, now I'll sit here in silence for 20 minutes. Oh, oh, oh I'm going to roll some dice. Yep, I missed. Okay, now yeah. I'll wait another 20 minutes in silence. And I know all the arguments people always say, like, let people play what yeah. they want to play. And I wholeheartedly agree. If you enjoy D&D, &D, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where most people get into the hobby. Like, they've played Baldur's Gate 3 and now they want to try D&D. &D. Fantastic. Please do. Mm. But just be aware that there are other options out there um, that might fulfill your needs of pretending to be someone else. Now, to my mind, James, that's not a contentious position to take. So let's issue a oh, challenge. Okay. So if you out there at the festival, and this is limited to the festival, I would deny any uh, interest in this outside festival time. During the festival itself, if you disagree with the uncontentious, very casual position of D&D is a structured war game scenario that you can tag a uh, role-playing around, and it's very fun for them that likes it. However, there are richer, deeper, more role-playing, role playing type systems out there. Do you way, like the way I put a a bit of an echo sure that was great thank you yeah i went to school for that one that was money well spent wasn't it anyway so can i come and challenge us uh, please do 
Well, actually, don't challenge me. Come and find James Benison and challenge him. Absolutely, you. please do. I-, I was trying to be very diplomatic in the way that I went there. Hey, I- I'll say this. There's a people who go, I'm changing the rules of D&D. I'm adding extra things in. I'm taking things out. I want to do D&D, but in space. I want to do D&D, but I'm going to set it in the Fallout universe. I want to do D&D, um, yeah. but in the Dune universe. All of those things have got other games specifically designed for it, and I dare say are better equipped for that. So... Why are you still playing D&D? Yeah. <laughs> but you're not anti-people playing D&D at all. What's curious is if someone can, turns up with a D&D character trying to splice it into scenario, could you do it? Would you be able to you fit them in? You know what? I backed uh, One Hunk Before Midnight on Kickstarter, and as one of their stretch goals, they've got a one-shot yeah. D&D version of this campaign where you, <laughs> where you play it yeah. from the point of view of the humans who are in the village and the bad guys are all geese. Yeah. <laughs> and in the end, you have to fight this five-headed geese hydra. <laughs> What's the optimum size for a one honk before midnight? But personally, I always think four people is the best size in terms of players yeah. and then one GM. I will go up to five or six if I like the people and know that they'll get involved and won't hog the spot- spotlight too much. Between four and six is, is the best. There you go, folks. Well, listen, thank you very much, James Venison, the amazing James Venison. Seek him out if you get a chance at the festival. He'll be one of the many people providing role-playing experiences. Thank you so much for having me, Andy. You've been listening to SGFR, the podcast radio channel for the Strange Games Festival. This season's hosts have been James, Laura, Andy and Craig. And if you'd like to come on the show, message us on the Festival Radio channel on the Strange Games Festival Discord server.